You have got to be kidding me. Hello guys, it's Stephanie. So some horse camping campsites offer permanent corrals to contain your horse, but a lot of them require you to bring your own. So in today's video, we are looking at five different ways that you can contain your horse while you're horse camping and the pros and the cons of each. Now, the last one is one that I had never seen before. You will definitely want to stay tuned. So one popular method that you might have seen are portable corral panels. There are a lot of different manufacturers for these with a lot of different materials. The the pros for portable corral panels is that you can assemble them virtually anywhere. You don't need trees, you don't need a certain type of ground, you can just throw your panels up and you've got an instant containment for your horse. It also tends to mimic home. You know, if you keep your horse in a paddock or in a stall, they will probably be used to having some sort of barrier fencing around them. And so a lot of people find that their horse takes to it pretty readily. Because your horse isn't restrained by anything, it's usually very easy and comfortable for them to lay down. So the downside of portable corral panels is that they tend to be the most expensive option. A lot of the manufacturers that I looked at, a basic set to get you started was seven or $800. They're also the heaviest option, which means that you're also consuming a lot more fuel to bring it along with you. You also need one set of panels per horse. And I find that your basic introductory set is a little small for the size of horse that I have. So I would need to be buying extra panels just to give fame a decent size space to move around in. Some other complaints that I heard from folks is that they of course aren't as durable as your typical pipe panel because they aren't as thick and heavy duty. So they sometimes will dent relatively easily. A lot of people find that their horses can shift the entire pen around, which they don't like. And other people have complained that their horse can escape relatively easily from these portable corral panels. Another common option I've seen are trailer ties. These are poles that are permanently attached to the side of your trailer, and you can pull them out and attach your horse to them when you go camping. The upside to these, of course, is that they're extremely convenient. They are always attached to your trailer. They take virtually no time to set up. You just pull it out and hook your horse up. And because they don't take up a lot of room, it can be really ideal in crowded campsite situations or if you're going to events or competitions where space is at a premium. I also think they happen to be a great emergency backup if you get to a place and find that your planned method doesn't work and they are relatively inexpensive. The trailer ties that I found online start at about $250. One thing that I did notice when I was camping is that people would have multiple trailer ties on their trailer so it allowed them to keep two horses on a single trailer so if you're hauling in a two horse trailer trailer, you can put one horse on either side and it makes things super easy. I would say the biggest con to this method is that it gives your horse the least amount of room to move. So your horse is basically stuck as far out as the pole will extend and they just have that little bit of space to turn around and eat and lay down in. I also talked to some folks who mentioned that they have seen horses get their feet stuck under the trailer when they laid down and then tried to get back up. So they definitely recommended putting some kind of plywood barricade or maybe big water tubs in front of the wheel wells. And then I did notice in some of the online forums that people had concerns about the pole breaking if their horse happened to freak out. Electric fencing is another option for you when you horse camp. The big pro to this is that you can basically create any size or shape that you want. So you can give your horse as much room as your kit and your campsite will allow. And because your horse isn't tied to anything, they have the freedom to move around and lay down just like they would at home. It takes up very little space in storage and it doesn't require anything special at your campsite like trees or highline poles. It's also not too expensive. Your basic portable electric fencing kit is somewhere around two or three hundred dollars. Now some of the biggest cons about portable electric fencing is that it is tedious and time consuming to set up. The woman I talked to that was using this method really loved it, but the downside for her was that it took her a good long time to get her horse's corral set up. Another very common complaint, especially if you are horse camping in the backcountry, is that because it is not a solid wall of containment, you can have wildlife or other horses basically come through your horse's corral area. You definitely wanna make sure that your horse respects electric fencing before you try this. And some people have been concerned that their horse can escape pretty easily from electric fencing just by jumping over it or in a panic potentially running through it. These kits often use solar panels to help power them. So you wanna make sure that you also have a good amount of sunshine in the place that you're horse camping. Now, one of the most popular ways to contain a horse while horse camping is highlining. Highlining is the most economical option of the five. You can purchase a Highline kit for around $100 or so, and it folds up easily into a small bag, so it's extremely portable. Highlining gives your horse a lot of freedom of movement depending on the length of their Highline, and you can also fit multiple horses 
on a single high line. So for people who are camping with two or three horses, it's really easy for them to just set up one long high line and have all their horses on the same line. The downside to high lining is that a horse has the potential to get caught up in the rope if the high line isn't high enough or secured well enough, or if the horse just doesn't handle high lining well. So you definitely wanna keep a knife handy just in case. It does require tall trees or high line poles and you definitely have to bring a ladder so that you can get your high line up high enough. Some people get overwhelmed and confused by the knots required in a high line and I actually do too, which is why I purchased some special products that enable me to set up my high line by myself without using any special knots. And if you'd like to watch the video of how I do that, you can check it out here. I've also included the high line kit that I use down in the description below. Now this final method is one that I had never seen before. When I came across it, I was like, you have got to be kidding me. It is a method of ground tying your horse and it's a product called Beyond Tack Ground Tie System. Now I'm not sponsored by them and I'm not endorsing them, but that's the method that this particular person chose to use and I thought it was really fascinating. The biggest pro that I observed with this method is that your horse gets a ton of space, basically about a 24 foot diameter circle that they can truckle. It takes very minimal equipment. You just basically hammer this rotating stake into the ground and attach it to your horse. And because of the density and the flexibility of this really thick PVC pipe rope thing, your horse actually can't get tangled up and injure themselves like they can with a regular nylon rope. Now, when I first saw this method, I thought for sure the horse would be able to pull that stake out of the ground and run off. The way you actually release the stake is that you pull upward, but because a horse, when they're anchored, would actually spook out to the side, the stake actually stays anchored into the ground really well. And because there's a swivel around that stake, your horse can travel comfortably in any direction that they want. It's also a surprisingly economical option coming in at about $130. Now the downsides to this option is that you have to have ground that's soft enough for you to be able to hammer in the stake. So if you're camping in really rocky areas, this isn't gonna work for you. And I would say it's kind of an unusual setup. There's a little bit of weight and tension right around the horse's neck, which a lot of horses are probably not used to. The woman that I talked to actually uses a collar, much like a dog collar, around her mule's neck because she found that when she used a halter, her horse was still able to get his back foot caught up in it when he would go to scratch his ear. I did read in some of the reviews that other people had had the same issue, so it seems like having the collar is kind of the way to go. Now, I think it's important to remember with all of this that not every horse is gonna be comfortable with every single method. Everyone I talked to had experimented with a wide variety of methods with their horse and had settled on the one that really worked best for them. They also encouraged me to try the method at home first just to make sure that my horse was safe and comfortable. If you have a favorite way that you like to contain your horse while horse camping, let me know why down in the comments below. Thanks so much for watching and we'll see you next time.